flammables and combustibles. We use them every day at work, at home, and we don't think anything about it. Things like hairspray, spray paint, gasoline for our automobiles, cleaning solvents, and many other things that are both flammable and or combustible. Misuse of these items cause fires and health hazards. So let's take a look at flammables and combustibles and just give you some basic information relating to the safe use of these materials. Some of the basic rules that people need to follow when handling flamm flammable materials, of course, to me, the, the most important being that uh, we have a tendency, uh, and even at home, not only in the workplace, of pouring or mix mixing uh, flammable materials uh, in a close proximity to sparks, arcs, or high temperature areas. And to me, in my own opinion, that is probably the worst possible thing that you could do when handling uh, flammable materials. Uh, another thing that's, that's sort of my pet peeve is to go out on a job site or go out in the field and notice uh, gasoline cans that are really intended uh, for personal and private use at, at your home. What I'm referring to is these black, uh, rather, I'm sorry, plastic containers that you can buy at hardware stores and that, that really uh, are not appropriate UL and FPA uh, approved uh, flammable materials storage cans. The very first thing to explain is what a safety container is and why it's a safety container. This is not a safety container for flammable liquids. We know these types of containers can be purchased almost anywhere, and there are millions of these cans lying around in garages, trunks of automobiles, and even some in workplaces, but they are dangerous and shouldn't be used to store flammable liquids. By explaining what a safety container is, you'll be able to see why these other containers should not be used. The cutaway of a safety container shows a couple of basic features, including sturdy metal that won't break or become easily damaged. One of the most important features is the long filter-looking device inside the container. This is a flame arrester. The purpose of a flame arrester is to prevent sparks or flames from coming into the container and causing an explosion. Let's say you're pouring gasoline into another container and the gas catches fire. Without the flame arrester, the flames could be sucked back into the container and expand quickly, creating an explosion. The flame arrester prevents this from occurring. Next, the safety container has a spring-loaded top. In a hot environment, liquids expand. With a spring-loaded top, the pressure inside the can opens the spring-loaded lid and escapes easily and safely. In another type container, the pressure keeps building up until something allows it to escape. It could possibly break the container or cause a leak, but the pressure has to be relieved, and a spring-loaded top is the safest method. The spring-loaded top also keeps the liquid inside the container until you're ready to use it. That's the safety container story. Which one would you choose to put in the trunk of your automobile? We don't want to bore you with a lot of definitions and terminology, such as flash points, flammability limits, vapor density, and other items, but it is important to understand that flammable liquids can be ignited by sparks, matches, open flames, and other sources of ignition, including static electricity. Static electricity is generated by the contact and separation of dissimilar material. As an example, when fluid flows through a pipe or from an orifice into a tank. A point of danger from a static spark is the place where flammable vapor may be present in the air, such as the outlet of a flammable liquid fill pipe, at a delivery hose nozzle into another container. When the right vapor mixed with the proper amount of air, one little spark can cause an explosion with flammable liquids. How do you reduce the risk of an explosion when transferring flammable liquids from one container to another? We call it bonding and grounding. We'll use an example of a five gallon container being filled from a 55 gallon container. The first step is to ground the 55 gallon container to a good ground or earth. A good ground could be a solid bare copper wire or other approved conductor in good solid contact with the metal of the 55 gallon container and going to a metal water pipe or other good ground. That's the grounding wire. A good conductor wire would then be placed on the 55 gallon metal container making sure it is a metal-to-metal -metal connection and not to a painted surface. Then the other end of the wire would be placed on the 5-gallon container, metal-to-metal -metal connection. 
Any static electricity would then be dissipated to the grounding bonding wires to ground, therefore reducing the risk of static sparking and a potential explosion. Why don't we have to do this when we fill our gasoline tanks on our vehicles? Basically, the connection from the metal hose to the gasoline pump provides adequate bonding and grounding. Okay, some additional safety tips are in order. When storing flammables, make sure the storage area is well ventilated. Fumes and vapors from flammables can create an explosion hazard. Accidental mixture of flammable and combustible liquid should be prevented. A small amount of acetone accidentally put into a kerosene tank, which is combustible, could cause the lowering of the flash point of the contents and create a more flammable mixture when the kerosene is used later. The same thing applies to home heating fuel. Mixing gasoline with heating fuel could cause a dangerous mixture and explosion. Without going into a lot of detail, flammable liquids are more easily ignitable than combustible liquids. Each liquid has specific uses, so it's important to read and understand all the labels and safety data sheets of any chemical or liquid you use. If you read the labels on the chemicals you purchase for home use, many of them will say flammable, keep away from sparks or open flames, no smoking or other such warnings. Pressurized spray paint and other home chemicals can be quite hazardous if they aren't used properly. Read, understand, and follow the instructions printed on all chemicals because they can be hazardous if not used properly. Take care of health and safety when using, storing, handling, and disposing of flammables, combustibles, and all types of chemicals both at work and at home.